like to talk about your plea of guilty? No. Did you have um, sexual contact with a student? A former Southeast Texas teacher who pleaded guilty on sex charges involving a former student says little what prosecutors claimed coming up in just moments. And neighbors on high alert, a pair of masked men attempted to break into a North Beaumont home early today. Neighbors say they're ready for anyone else who'd like to try it. That's scary. That's scary. I mean, three doors down, that's just too close. Why this woman says, as scary as the situation is, she's now ready. First, tonight, a former teacher at Legacy Christian Academy could serve up to 20 years in prison for a student relationship. Welcome to 12 News HD Today. I'm Kevin Steele. Thanks for coming by. Jackie has the night off. In our news this evening, 54-year-old Leanne Wallace pleaded guilty to improper relationship with a student and sexual assault of a child in Judge John Stevens' courtroom today. 12 News HD reporter Vanessa Holmes joins us in studio with details on this dramatic plea. Vanessa? Kevin Leanne Wallace was a teacher at Legacy Christian Academy for over 10 years. School officials say she resigned in November and did not give a reason. It was about two months later that the school leader said they were notified that Wallace had engaged in an improper relationship with a former female student. The school immediately sent out this notification to parents of the school saying they believe it was an isolated incident and that no other students were involved. Today, the former music teacher admitted to the relationship by pleading pleading guilty to two charges. According to attorneys in court, the incident began back in 2006 and lasted several years. When asked if she wanted to comment, Wallace stopped and told me no, then kept walking. Wallace will be sentenced on August 12th. She could serve anywhere from two to 20 years in prison. And although she has not been sentenced yet, Judge Stevens says she will serve both uh, sentences concurrently. Just about a parent's worst nightmare. Definitely. Course, we hear that the school. family's taking it very hard. Mm, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, the prosecution says the student's family is severely traumatized by the relationship. It occurred for about five years. Wallace's attorney, Paul Fukuda, released the following statement to 12 News HD saying, quote, it's a tragedy for both families. Ms. Wallace is taking full responsibility. Mr. Fukuda says he will release more information regarding the case once Wallace is sentenced. That expected to happen next month. Police say one man who tried to burglarize a North Beaumont home is still on the run. The other is in critical condition tonight with three gunshot wounds. Officers regard it as a case of self-defense that stopped the home invasion. 12 News HD reporter Ellie Cano found a lot of solidarity for the shooter from his neighbors. That's scary. That's scary. I mean... Three doors down, that's just too close. 20 years of living in this neighborhood, and Dorothy Sinegar says she's never known an aggravated robbery to take place here. But to her surprise, that changed Monday morning. He's a good person. He doesn't bother anybody. As the crime scene is cleaned and evidence is collected, police say the man living in this home in the 4300 block of Dallas Avenue answered a knock at his front door around 3 a.m. to a man claiming he needed some gas. He was going to attempt to help him, apparently, and as he walked out the door, there was a second subject that was crouched next to the door in a Halloween mask. Officer Kibito says the man was wearing a mask like this one from the movie Scream and tried to attack the homeowner. The uh, homeowner was armed and responded by shooting the subject in the mask three times. The man was shot in the head, arm, and hip and was taken to Christus Hospital St. Elizabeth in critical condition. Although Senegar says this is a scary situation. She commends her neighbor for protecting himself. Because you live here and you work hard for your stuff and for someone to come and just want to take something from you, I would have done the same thing. Trust me. And police say the homeowner was well within his right to shoot his attacker. In Beaumont, Ellie Cano, 12 News HD. Well, the injured accused intruder is still in the hospital and has undergone surgery. The other suspect remains a free man tonight. Both men will face charges of aggravated robbery. They both had guns.
A 20-year-old Beaumont man has been sentenced to 20 years in prison for attempted capital murder after firing gunshots at a Beaumont police officer. According to court documents, Joseph Dudley fired a half dozen gunshots at Officer Michael Jones, who was pursuing Dudley. Jones was responding to reports of an auto burglary in the Old Town area of Beaumont. Dudley tried to change his plea after sentencing today. That request was emphatically denied. After the sentencing, Officer Sir Jones told 12 News HD, quote, would I have liked to see more? Sure, I wanted to see him do no less than 25 years. Jones was not hurt, thank goodness, in that shooting. We've seen a few showers. We've seen a lot of sprinkles out there today. Is there more of the same lurking out there tonight? Patrick? Yes, as we speak right now, Kevin, some pretty heavy showers and thunderstorms up uh, 69 from around uh, just to the west of Kuntz and also around Woodville and also Comanale. A lot of areas seeing some uh, brief heavy rainfall. Closer inspection shows those showers. Quite a bit of uh, thunder and lightning uh, just to the east of Comanale and Woodville. And that continues to move on off towards the north and towards the west at around 15 miles an hour. Quite a bit of lightning to the east of Woodville, as you can see, moving further down. Uh, not as heavy rainfall uh, over towards Warren and also Hillister. Fred and Sperger seeing some heavier rains here in the last hour or so. And those showers continue towards Village Mills, just to the west of Kuntz, and right again over towards uh, Bevel Oaks. This evening, a chance of showers and storms in 88 at 6 p.m., still ongoing at uh, 85 at 8 p.m. down to 78 at 10. We'll talk much more about uh, this wet pattern, how long it'll last. Take a look at the weekend forecast in just a few minutes. Thank much. Thanks, Patrick. Tommy Muska, the mayor of West, Texas, addressed more than 100 people at a town hall meeting today on the rebuilding effort since that devastating fertilizer plant explosion there three months ago. Everything from counseling services to building permits and how residents should continue seeking aid was brought up in the meeting. Muska says stage one of the town's infrastructure is putting in a new water pipeline structure, building a second well, and repairing the one damaged in that explosion. He says over the next few weeks, they'll be getting bids for these projects, and hopefully in about a month, contractors can begin the construction work there. So far, get this, 140 homes and four commercial buildings have been demolished, leaving only a few structures that need to be torn down. The legal ordeal may not be over for George Zimmerman. He could face federal charges in the killing of Trayvon Martin. Spokespersons within the Department of Justice say the agency will review the case for potential civil rights offenses. Advocates like the Reverend Al Sharpton say taking a life is the ultimate violation of a person's civil rights. Some opponents say such a legal case would be tough to make since the FBI has already interviewed three dozen witnesses who generally did not tag Zimmerman on the grounds of racial discrimination. Ultimately, it is up to Attorney General Eric Holder. I want to assure you that the department will continue to act in a manner that is consistent with the facts and the law. We are committed to standing with the people of Sanford, with the individuals and families affected by this incident, and with our state and local partners, local partners in order to alleviate tensions, to address community concerns, and to promote healing. At a briefing today, White House Press Secretary Jay Carney said President Obama will not get involved in a potential civil rights case, nor will he comment on the Justice Department investigation. Russian President Vladimir Putin is blaming the U.S. for the stranding of former U.S. spy agency contractor Edward Snowden. Snowden has been in Russia for weeks now, and Putin says Snowden was not invited. He hopes he will leave as soon as possible, he says. Snowden is accused of leaking secret information on sweeping U.S. surveillance programs. During this time, Snowden has been weighing offers of asylum from other countries as well. At the pump, gas prices jumping at least eight cents over the past week nationwide. The average price per gallon, three fifty-five. The average. Analysts expect the upward trend to continue another ten to fifteen cents. Gas prices in our area creeping closer to the national average. Hate to tell you, the average price for a gallon of regular unleaded sits at three forty-three in the Beaumont Port Arthur area. A week ago, that was three twenty-eight. A month ago, the average price three thirty-six. And on this day, one year ago. 
prices at the pump were $3.22 for a gallon of regular unleaded. A consumer alert for you tonight. Federal investigators taking a closer look at some Mercedes C-Class sedans because of complaints of smelling smoke and finding burn marks in the trunk of the cars. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration checking into the possibility of a wiring-related problem in more than 200,000 C-Class models from 2008 and 2009. 21 complaints so far. Owners say their brake lights and turn signals failed, and then they smelled smoke. One person reported flames in the trunk. The preliminary evaluation could lead to a recall if investigators determine there is a safety issue. Dozens of teen girls, more than 70 of them were told, lined up at the Books a Million store at Beaumont's Parkdale Mall today for a chance to meet Justin Bieber's mom. Many of them, get this, referred to Patty Millett as their future mother-in-law. Millett was signing copies of her new book called Nowhere But Up, Teen Edition. She says the purpose of her book is to show teens that her life has been filled with grace and hope, despite dealing with abandonment issues, depression, sexual abuse, and single parenthood. I'm not up here writing a book to say, you too can have a successful pop star for a son. I'm here to say, I've been through terrible things and overcome and had healing. And I just want to really encourage other people that they, they can have hope too. She has over 2 million Twitter followers. Her book is a teen edition of her New York Times bestseller. Low pressure in the upper levels of the atmosphere bringing in a pretty good coverage of showers and thunderstorms. More on the way. We'll talk about how long this wet pattern will last coming up. But first, on 12 News HD, did you see this? A fun day in the sun turned very scary for one little boy in the bottom of all that. How playing in the sand left him clinging for life. A six-year-old Illinois boy sucked into a giant sand dune was at the brink of death for three hours this weekend as rescue crews tried desperately to try to reach him. Nathan Wazner was trapped under 11 feet of sand after a sand dune collapsed. His doctors say they expect a full recovery, although he will likely have sand in his lungs for another six months. Doctors say he should be breathing on his own in the next two weeks. Searchers have recovered two more bodies in the train derailment in Canada, bringing the death toll to 35. Now investigators say 15 people are still missing after that 73 car train carrying fuel derailed and exploded in Quebec on July 6th. The accident has prompted a national discussion in Canada on rail safety. First alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Patrick Vaughn. Good evening, Southeast Texas. We're on the medical center of Southeast Texas Live Sky Cam Network at Packard La Prey in downtown Beaumont. 87 degrees, the current temperature, just a trace in downtown with uh, breezy south winds at 16. You can see some uh, dark clouds moving through. We've seen scattered showers and thunderstorms across the area today, and this is all due to upper level low pressure moving through Oklahoma and North Texas, and quite a surge of moisture off the Gulf of Mexico leading to those scattered showers and thunderstorms not everybody getting showers and storms and of course with high rain chances at about a 50 to 60 percent coverage that doesn't mean it's going to rain all day it does mean that you could locally see some heavy rainfall of one to two inches and some uh, well brief gusty winds and also uh, quite a bit of lightning let's take a look at what's going on in pinpoint doppler radar and as you can see quite a cluster of showers and storms up into tyler county this all is moving on off towards the north and west at about 15 miles an hour. Closer inspection shows those showers and storms, which are not severe, but they do contain quite a bit of lightning and uh, heavy rainfall, maybe one to two inches in some of the stronger sails. The heaviest activity just north of Comanil, but again, it looks like it's just off towards your south and east, heading towards Coman Hill, and also more rain in towards Woodville. Warren seeing rain back over to Hillister and Village Mills. Sperger and Fred seeing some heavier rain earlier. And uh, this continues on down over towards Kuntz, maybe a little heavier rain heavy, heading over towards Saratoga and back over towards northwestern Hardin County. So a lot of folks seeing some beneficial rains. Earlier we saw some heavy rains over towards uh, Mauriceville. 
and back over towards Vider earlier this morning. So some good news there. This is all courtesy of low pressure in the upper levels of the atmosphere. This is all moving on off towards the west and we'll still see quite a feed of moisture around that to area of low pressure uh, the next couple of days. Temperatures mid 80s out there. We have 89 on our thermometer here at the station and so does Lynn over in Mauriceville over in towards southeast Tyler County. Fred Redkey reporting 76 and 1.42 inches of rainfall. 67 rain cool degrees in Abilene. 73 in Dallas. 76 in Austin. And on the outskirts, temperatures in the 80s and 90s. You can see the spin in the upper atmosphere. Beneficial rains. Uh, most of Texas is under, well, burn bans and also quite a drought going on going up into northwest Texas. Scattered showers and thunderstorms continuing across the area this evening as we take it hour by hour by midnight into the mid 70s and I think we'll see lower to middle 70s across the area. We'll Give it about a 30% coverage of showers once again developing and I do expect a pretty good coverage tomorrow about a 60% coverage across the area. Slightly choppy seas on the Gulf around two feet tomorrow. You'll see easterly winds at 10 to 15 knots only one high tide tomorrow morning at 902 sunrise 626 your forecast tonight about a 30 maybe 40% coverage lows in the low to mid 70s then tomorrow we'll see highs in the mid to upper 80s, a 60% coverage of showers and storms. Taking a look at your seven day forecast where the weekend's always in view. If you're still wanting more rain and maybe have been missed, you've got another opportunity Tuesday and Wednesday. Rain chances go back to near normal coming up Friday and Saturday and may get another surge of moisture coming in on Sunday, which will give us about a 30 to 40% coverage. But again, this is great news, Kevin. We've needed it. We've been telling you it's coming and uh, some areas is seeing a little more than what they needed. It's generally great news, not great news for golf, though, and right. the YMBL Junior and, Golf Tournament. And you don't want to hold that <laughs> lightning rod up. Yeah, that's right, exactly. Thanks a lot. So to come on 12 News HD tonight, a local man is no stranger to the stage and providing entertainment to seniors. How Jerry Tatum is keeping his family legacy alive. Coming up next. It's being played at a local assisted living community and it's music to everyone's ears. 12 News HD reporter Vanessa Holmes visits Pelican Bay where residents receive an earful of good music in this week's What's Right in Southeast Texas. Jerry Tatum is no stranger to the stage. He travels the Golden Triangle providing entertainment to elderly residents and he's done it all of his life. Mom, Dad, and I used to go around and uh, we played in the, in the nursing homes, assisted living facilities. Through the songs he sings, he keeps a family tradition alive. It, it's, it just seemed like every time I play that and sing it, I can feel their presence. The legacy he's carrying on is enjoyed by all. Love music, absolutely love music. Everybody does any kind of music, and every type of music. We enjoyed him, we always do enjoy him because he sings the songs that are old that we know. Chili Wall and her friends at the Pelican Bay Assisted Living Community can hear Tatum sing on Fridays during happy hour, an hour of music, wine, and popcorn. It's, it's good for you to have something like that. So we always enjoy this. Tatum is not done yet hoping to add more stops to his tour of assisted living facility. It's just something that, uh, that, that I enjoy doing. It's not so much entertainment as it is growing in the residence to you. In Beaumont, Vanessa Holmes, 12 News HD. Pelican Bay also brings its residents on outings, and next month they are bringing in Elvis or Ann Elvis. We're still accepting nominations for our What's Right in Southeast Texas segment, by the way. Send us an email with your nomination to 12news, kbmt12.com. After the break tonight, the first breaths of life are usually followed by the cutting of a newborn's umbilical cord, of course. Why one study says not so fast on that. In our health alert tonight, a new look at a practice that's as old as human beings cutting a baby's umbilical cord. In the womb, the cord is a lifeline, of course, carrying oxygen and nutrients from the mother's blood to the fetus. And as ABC's Dr. Timothy Johnson shows us, the umbilical cord is an issue even after childbirth. 
The first breaths of life are usually followed by the familiar procedure of cutting the newborn's umbilical cord. But a new study says maybe not so fast. Researchers writing in the Cochrane database say that delaying clamping of the cord for up to three minutes raises iron levels in newborn's blood, an effect that can last four months and may raise the birth weight. Looking at nearly 4,000 mothers and their full-term infants, they found that delayed cord clamping allowed more time for the transfer of fetal blood from the mother's placenta. That means up to 60% more red blood cells for the newborn. One caution, the delayed clamping was associated with a slightly higher risk of jaundice for the baby, a condition that is usually very easily corrected. With this Medical Minute, I'm Dr. Timothy Johnson. Up next on 12 News HD, after a nine-month hiatus, a beloved snack cake returns. Why Twinkie lovers may not be so pumped up, though, about some recent changes. Twinkie fans, oh, you got it. It's back. The sweet treats are officially on the shelves again across the country as of today. Officially, it's been nine months since Twinkies disappeared from the stores after the maker, Hostess, filed for bankruptcy. Now they're back, but they're smaller. The boxes used to weigh 15 ounces. Now they weigh only 13.5 ounces. Beaumont's Walmart store got an early release shipment of the new Twinkies this weekend, and the boxes were pretty much snapped up as soon as I even have a, a box. Got a box myself this weekend. Passed away, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, thanks for coming by to join us. We'll see you a little bit later.